can't be seated. <laughs> Who gives this woman to be wed? Do you take Abigail Rigby to be your wife, to have and to hold, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, until death do you part? Abigail, do you take Trey Rose to be your husband, to have and to hold, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, until death do you part? To all those who are witnesses to the covenant Trey and Abigail are making before God, will you support Trey and Abigail as they unite and live in the covenant of marriage? Will you strengthen them and love them, always seeking their interest for the good of their union? If you will, please respond by saying, I do. I do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your word says in Psalm 118 that this is the day the Lord has made. We take a moment to pause and recognize who you are, God of the universe, creator of all things, and loving Father to us all. You are the God of Trey and Abigail, and right now you are here in Lexington, Virginia, to bear witness to the covenant your two children are going to make to each other, a covenant only made possible by your loving covenant with us. We ask for your presence this afternoon, for your grace, your strength, your love, and your Holy Spirit to pour on Trey and Abigail now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. As we go up to the top of the stage, we also invite Mrs. Karen Rydell and Mrs. Gina Rigby for the reading of God's Word. From the first chapter of Ruth, verses 16 and 17. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and I. Ecclesiastics 4, verse 9. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one could help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can I keep warm alone? Mrs. Karen and Gina will now light their candles in preparation for community candle presentation. In um, preparing to speak about Trey and Abigail, I thought of a lot of things that I could say. But fortunately for all of us, Abigail told me she wanted the wedding ceremony to be 30 minutes long. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to read from this script that my wife approved. <laughs> Trey and Abigail asked me to read another passage from Genesis chapter 2. So we're going to be hearing from Genesis chapter 2, verses 22 through 24. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. 
and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and they will become one flesh. So these three passages that we've read today, they center around the word and the theme unity. Why is this important? What does this mean for Trey and Abigail today? And what could God be saying to us as we bear witness to this? First, this union, this unity, it's new. So leave the old behind. Genesis 2 says a man and a woman will leave their family. Now, you won't totally leave your family because you love your family. Matter of fact, you're going to um, find on this journey. <laughs> Very smart for not answering that. Matter of fact, you're going to find out on this journey that you will enter into a relationship that you've never had with your parents before, which once again makes all of this new. You're leaving behind what you've come to know your entire life, and you're beginning something new, something outside of yourself. Leave the baggage behind. You won't know what to do at times, and to be honest, you're not supposed to know. But the beauty of this covenant that you're making today is that you will always have someone to figure it out. Secondly, you are one. And if you are one, that means you need each other. If we go back to before the passage in Genesis 2, God says it is not good for man to be alone. He makes a helper. That is the Hebrew word used, and it can often be translated to be a military term, meaning reinforcements. A military term that I think is striking to us as we stand in a military college in front of a painting of men doing that job. Ecclesiastes, as we heard, would go so far to say that you're actually better when you go together. Think of it like this. A kite flying in the sky has two distinct parts, the kite and the string. Both are different, with different abilities and different viewpoints on life. But when they go together, they create something new and something that never could have happened without them working together. You work better together. You were made to reinforce each other. If you are one, this also means not only do you work better together, but you go together. You guys are going to leave this place today and you're going to keep journeying through life. Remember that you have someone beside you the whole time. You are not on your own, but you are together. Remember what Ruth says, where you go, I go. Finally, all of this is grounded in love. This is my favorite cheesy illustration, but people use um, an illustration for life as a roller coaster. We hear that often, right? The roller coaster of life with its ups, downs, twists, turns, upside downs. If that's true, do you know what love is? Love is the tracks. See, people only enjoy these rides because they are connected to the tracks. If they weren't connected to the tracks, it would be like movies. It would be terrible, right? These tracks keep us grounded. We know no matter what this coaster throws at us, we will make it to the end. Your love is what you are saying right now. No matter what this roller coaster looks like, no matter what ups, downs, or upside downs, you will keep going. You will make it to the end. Now, how do we know this? How can we trust what we're hearing today from God's word is true? I would say because this love, this covenant that we're talking about, is the same one that God has already given to you. Ephesians 5 says that marriage is a mysterious illustration of our relationship with God. If that's true, then everything we have said is actually because of what God has done for us. If we're looking at this being new, in Isaiah, God says to us, a new covenant I will make. I will forget the old and I will make something new with you. In terms of being one in Genesis, God breathes his life into us and makes us in his own image. We are made to be with God. And if we push that even further, we go better together with God. We need him. We can't do life on our own. We weren't built that way, and it shows across the world whether people believe in God or not. God has a place and a purpose for your marriage. Across scripture, he shows himself as a present God, guiding his people and being with them until the end. And all of this is grounded in God's love for you. He is the one that looked at you 
and said, for better or worse, sickness and health, richer or poorer, I will never stop loving you. And then he looked at death and he said, actually, not even that is going to separate us. And he died for us, forgetting and forgiving our past. Jesus willingly came to earth to show us what love really is. And because of that, God's relationship with us isn't until death do us part. Because death has died. So what do we do with this? Trey, love Abigail like Jesus loves you. Give your life to her. Give your life for her. Forget the past because God has forgotten yours. Serve her. Lead her. Protect her. Trust her and what God is revealing to her. This, this is a gift. Cherish it. Abigail, love Trey like Jesus loves you. Forget the past because God has forgotten yours. Serve him, care for him, lead him, trust him, trust his leadership and his following of the Holy Spirit. This is a gift. Cherish it. Now both of you, wherever you go, the Lord is sending you. He has a purpose, he has been offering his presence and he will never stop offering. Never forget the love that binds you together. Never forget the love that is doing this for you. The love that is found only in Jesus Christ our Lord. And for everybody else out there, the love that you see and you hear up, up here today is the same love that Jesus has for you. He's always been offering it, and he always will. If you want to know more about it, you can come talk to me. I'll be the one in the middle of the reception dancing with my wife. Just wait until a song that I don't like. You'll see me standing by the buffet, okay? <laughs> that being said, let's pray and move on with this thing. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for love. I thank you that you showed us what marriage really was like when you sent your son to die for us. When you looked at us and said, for better or worse, no matter what happens, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Let that love be surrounding Trey and Abigail today and forever. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So Trey and Abigail have written personal vows to share with one another, and we will now hear Trey's vows to Abigail. Do you want mic? Abigail Hope, when I met you on September 29, 2013, I knew you were the one. I know this sounds cliche and easy to say looking back on a specific date and time, but feelings I had for a girl I had never met in my life at that moment was something that I don't think I'll ever be able to fully comprehend. It is very apparent to me that God blessed me on that day and put me in the presence of the closest thing <laughs> to an angel that I will ever come in contact with on this earth. There are so many things that I love about you, but here are some of my favorites. You love the Lord. You live and you stand by your morals. You're honest and transparent. You hold me accountable. You're always willing to make sacrifices for our relationship, such as moving to Pittsburgh for my dream job or becoming a minor Dolphins fan. <laughs> That's a sacrifice. <laughs> we're just saying. You're family-oriented. You're the most caring, selfless, and loving individual I've ever been around. I could not be happier to stand across from the love of my life in this, be in this beautiful building today. The fact that we get to celebrate our relationship in a place where we first met is so special to me. At VMI, they talk about this place is a no ordinary college and there's no ordinary life. Today I get to marry no ordinary woman. I think it's pretty obvious that we're not living an ordinary life. <laughs> we're both doing what we love, surrounded by people that we love, and I know the future is right for both of us. Today is a day that we'll forever we'll look back upon, and while it might look like a blur over time, the one thing I want you to remember is that I will love you unconditionally from this day until my last. In front of all of our loved ones today, I vow to love you without any limitations. I vow to always be your best friend. I vow to support your dreams and to encourage you to always strive towards your goals. I vow to go to bed every single night loving you and to wake up loving you even more. I vow to give you head rubs at night and I vow to accept your back rubs immediately following those head rubs. <laughs> I vow to not get too mad at you when you fall asleep during the first 15 minutes of a TV show and then ask me what happened during the last 45 minutes. <laughs> I vow to respect you and to always be honest with you. I vow to be your rock and to lead you through good times and bad times. I vow to love you faithfully 
and that our relationship will always be centered around the Lord. I love you from Richmond to Colonial Heights to Lexington to Harrisonburg. To St. John, to Florida, to Pittsburgh, and to the Palm Island of the Green of and back. Good job, sir. Go now here from Abigail. I cannot believe you're staying here today with all the loved ones in a place that is so near and dear to their heart. It has been five years since we met here in Lexington, Virginia, with no knowledge of the future to come. Today we have been together over four years, and I can truly say you keep driving my life to come to me. Before I met you, I had no direction my future. I was just a baby student hoping I'd figure out soon. I know now that God has a perfect plan for us. So staying here today, I have no reservation or fear. We enjoy a clear and trusting heart. Today I promise to love you that Jesus loves us unconditionally, patiently, humbly, and relentlessly. I promise to laugh at you in good times and nurse you back to house and leave you like you to come. <laughs> I promise to always see your belly with only food, always yes. have to get two meals to share, and lastly, always with a bottle of wine instead of the glass. I promise to support you in your career and personal life. No matter where this crazy journey of faith will take us, I promise to never stop expecting you, and even time to question. I promise to never stop trying to improve at this life thing, and to always give you my everything because you deserve the best. I promise to always forgive you easily and never allow you to go to that step. I promise to cherish, value, and protect the families that we have, the families that we are coming, and the families that we have yet to come. Craig, you are my very best friend. You are the love of my life, and you will be happier than I ever imagined. From this day on, I will always choose you. I choose you to laugh with, to decide, and love forever. I'm so thankful that you chose me, and I can't wait to spend the rest of our lives together as I've been I love you, too. Thank you, John. I think that's right. We're almost there. Trey and Abigail desire to symbolize their covenant by the giving and receiving of rings. These circles represent the everlasting love they're giving to each other, as well as the love God has for them. May I have the rings? Trey, as you put this on Abigail's finger, please repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, I give you myself, I give you myself, as your husband, as your husband, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Abigail, would you put this on Trey's finger? Please repeat after me. With this ring, I give you myself, I give you myself as, your wife, as your wife, in the name of the Father, the Father and of the Son, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless these rings and the everlasting covenant they represent. May they be a beacon of love, hope, and faith for Trey and Abigail now and forever. Amen. Trey and Abigail have chosen to affirm their love by the lighting of a unity candle. They've also asked their families to participate in the lighting ceremony, which we saw earlier. In so doing, they signaled their desire not only to join as one in their union, but to unite as two families together. I want to take a moment to explain what the lighting of these candles represents to them. Separate lives, separate families, separate sets of friends. Lighting the center candle represents that your two lives are now joined together as one. Not even married yet, already doing good. Look at that. <laughs> now for the best part. Trey Rose, Abigail Rigby, by the power vested to me by Yahweh the Creator God, 
by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and by the Holy Spirit of God. In accordance with his saints, these witnesses, and the state of Virginia, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Trey, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Great honor and pleasure that I present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Trey and Abigail Rose.